Hello everyone, welcome to this Video Sans Frontier video. My name is Jay Wakefield and today we have Billy and Luke with us because, um, well, I decided that I wanted Luke to be part of this video because I wanted it to have some humour and I decided Billy should be part of this video because I wanted it completely ruined. <laughs> <coughs> and um, because I thought I would take pity on Billy because much against my, well, he's decided to install Windows 95 on the uh, Packard Bell uh, PB1750 CDT and just to experiment even though it's now got a tree growing out the front of it <laughs> <laughs> now nah, we'll be kidding on it's it's doing fine if if you call if what when by fine you mean it loads up with millions of error messages then yes it's doing absolutely fantastic but just to keep Billy company on the Windows 95 front <clears throat> I've decided to install it on this Compaq LTE 5280. I realise I've not been entirely fair with you guys. I've had this LTE for a while and I've never done a follow-up video on it. Not, you know, no hands-on or not even a... Here's Windows 3.1 up and running. I did F-Disk it, which is a bit stupid because I could have shown you guys what Windows 3.1 was like on here, but it was not bad, actually. Pretty good. <clears throat> Only thing is... This machine does not have any kind of panel stretch. Hee haw, nada. Which is not very nice. But we are going to install Windows 95 on here. So I've got it hooked up to um, a PC card CD ROM drive. Because I don't have the CD ROM drive, driver, 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 drive um, thing. I don't have the multi bay CD ROM drive. Okay, do you happy now, big man? <laughs> do you happy now? I'm I'm from upstate, okay? <laughs> so, <laughs> so what I'm gonna need to do is create a new partition. So I'm I'm actually booting with no kind of CD-ROM support at all. And what I'm gonna do is F disk and then create a brand new partition. This is a two gig drive, which should be enough for what I want to do, maybe. Um, <clears throat> but this machine has been absolutely brilliant. You know, it's got a nice active matrix display. It's got stereo speakers on the screen, so they're not on the palm rest, which is very much Luke approved. Mm -hmm. So I'm now going into FDisk. I do want to enable large disk support and I want to create a primary partition. I'm just going to let it do that. <clears throat> right, okay. So now I've created the partition, I'm going to have to reboot the computer. Yes, and this one doesn't seem to do have the IBM style RAM count, and that... Yeah. <laughs> it makes me feel nervous and uncomfortable. <laughs> it's just not right, man. <laughs> Okay, and because I am going to be booting from, with, because I am going to be installing with a PC card CD-ROM drive, I'm going, going to select option 2, boot with Arcos PC card CD-ROM support. This, this was um, a boot disk that I made using lots of help from the internet. Yeah, internet. I know, it's pretty grand what you can do that, out there on that internet, right enough. Right, there seems to be a slight issue here. It's saying that no CD-ROM drive has been found and that the driver, consequently, has been dumped. So, what I'm going to do is I'm going to power off this machine. 
and then I'm going to power it back on again. This can happen with this particular machine, is that it needs to be able to power the drive off and then power it back on so it can reinitialize it, otherwise it just doesn't see it. It does seem a bit odd, but um, you know, once once I've got, you know, if I'm running with DOS and I've got the PC card uh, system, if, if I've got card soft installed and what have you, it usually takes charge and then when the CD-ROM driver has come to load, it works every time. Okay, so computer science lesson over. So that's the uh, CD drive spinning up, and it's actually found the driver this time. So uh, there you have it. I had a problem reading from CD-ROMs. I overcame it. Feel good story of the century. <laughs> And that concludes this video from Frontier Vietnam. We can. <laughs> <laughs>and I want to format it and make it bootable. So, format c colon slash s.
Imagine if iLife was available for Windows, that'd be brilliant. <laughs> yeah. And there was a lot of good stuff. Then again, everyone would be, you know, pining for iLife 06. A lot of people preferred iMovie HD over the newer ones. Me included, because the interface is <laughs> I did manage to get iMovie working, though. I mean, my, you know, when I started out with Video Sound Frontier, I was using iMovie to produce my videos. Now I use Vegas and... It works, but the interface is just stupid. It's like they took Final Cut Pro and then just cut it in half with a chainsaw and tried to put it back together. That sounds painful. That's how I feel. That, or that's how I felt when I tried to use it. I was like, this is like Final Cut, but they got rid of like everything. Well, that's no good, is it? <laughs> <laughs> right. Yeah. So, um... Right, the plan here is to now try and uh, find out. I completely forgot how to eject a PC card. What I'm going to do, I'll, I'll let the files finish copying, and then I'll restart the computer, eject the PC card CD ROM because there's stuff that I need to install before that will work into Windows 95 because it's not like the old Arcos unit that actually um, would just work. This is a Freecom unit that needs some drivers. <laughs> right. Okay, so that's the CD drive disconnected. I'll put this CF card reader in, just, you know, for when, because I've got a few bits and pieces on here. Well, I'm not going to slot it completely in just yet. And I'm going to run setup slash is because I don't want to be running with them um, trying to find a blimmin' what is it driver. Um, I'm you know I can't run scan disk at the moment because the HiMem system driver is not loaded. Scan disk. Yeah, so I can't run scan disk. <laughs> mm. So, who's got any plans for the summer? <laughs> <laughs> Wait, thanks for looking. Probably nothing. Yeah, that's all. I'm expecting lots of Grateful 42 videos on Luke's channel and videos with Dave and stuff. I, I, hope, to, I hope to have a job and be able to afford to buy a all-in-one Dell Optiplex. Those things are beautiful. I hope to have a job and be able to afford to fly some planes over your house saying, Billy Cor is stupid, he bought an all-in-one. <laughs> yeah. <clears throat> I don't know, I honestly can't say when I'm going to be work ready, it's, it really is just kind of a matter of, you know, me getting the right support with my depression and what have you. I mean, I tried, I tried running my business in 2012, you know, some of you VSF years will remember that, I took you to the office a couple of times. Mm -hmm. Did you enjoy your trip to the office? No, I'm only kidding. <laughs> <laughs> But yeah, I mean, I did take, you know. <sighs> yeah, I remember it was a Jay Wakefield computer's take your YouTube channel to work day. <laughs> I love the work settings I used to go on. It's brilliant. <laughs> Self employed.
right, so let's install some Let's install some things, man. And some stuff. So where are we at right now in this video? Um, I would say somewhere in the middle. Um, we are at the part of Windows 95 setup where I choose which networking components I want. Oh, okay. And we're now at the point where I give this machine a name, LTE5280 Work Group. Um, Cirrus Logic Video Card. That's what this thing has. I'm not entirely sure which model. Um, yeah, it's a standard computer. Um, Compaq Internal Trackball PS2. That's not quite right. It's a track point, but okay. Congratulations. Um, and it's an 800 by 600 laptop display. Good. We're all just about ready. No, I do not want a boot disk because I've got some. Um, I have the awesome yellow boot disk here. Get ready. <laughs> and now we're away to install Windows 95. So, if you didn't get yourself a cup of tea uh, during the formatting phase, go and get yourself one now. If you have had a cup of tea during the formatting phase, well, I've not drunk mine, so maybe drink it, maybe get a biscuit or something. Shortbread is always good. Um, put on some haggis pecorid. They're the future. Fantastic. And I'll be back once the installation's finished. Okay, so uh, here we are at uh, camera completely pointing in the wrong direction and not centred at all. Theatre. Now, there I have come into a slight issue with this, and I really don't know how. But uh, once I was copying the Windows 95 files over, it was actually telling me that um, there was um, a problem. Actually, you know, once I was in the installation part, there was a problem um, trying to get the um, decode from the CAD files. So I've thought that what I would do was try Windows 95 RTM. So I've reformatted the drive as FAT16, and I did so using an MS-DOS disk. In fact, MS-DOS setup disk 1, I just kind of went out of setup, f disk the drive, repartitioned, reformatted it in FAT16, and copied the system files over. So what's going to happen now is the system will boot f into MS-DOS 6.22. Right, good. And it seems to still remember the date. That I didn't expect. Nice job. Um, anyway. Don't mind me, I got Patty there going on the 4 Yep. And it's running Windows 95 again, this is just for experimentation. Yeah, so watch out for that video, because that is actually how the machine would have came from the factory. It's not what I would do. It isn't what I would do with a 486, make no mistake. However, it will run on a DX266. Right. Now, I'm going to go into setup, but with 95 RTM, scan disk will work as, it's do, as it just did then without hymem.sys loaded. So I was able to run a scan disk. So now, what I can do. Excuse me. Just kind of go through the setup. Oh, right. Lol at the floppy drive sounding like a diesel tractor. <laughs> What's the floppy drive wants to play Let's Explore the Farm? <laughs> uh, hi, I'm Buzzy the Knowledge Bug. <laughs> I ask a lot of questions. I've been waterboarded a lot that way. <laughs> <laughs> all right okay so this needs um a product key so i'll put that in and i'll be right back okay so now that's um everything else sorted i hope this works this time A 
If not, this does make a very, very, very fine DOS and Windows 3.1 machine. Certainly. <clears throat> yeah, pretty much what I'm using right now is what I would have gotten if my dad had gotten me a, my own personal Packard Bell when I was six years old. Aye. Of course, that's... That didn't happen for obvious reasons. <laughs> no, but I mean, to be fair, you did actually get to use... I mean, it was very good of your dad, because what he actually said to you a couple of days after buying the Packard Bell was, Billy, this is yours to use whenever you want. Exactly, and... <clears throat> I think me and him both used it pretty equally. <clears throat> Which I'm glad, I'm glad he um, did that to me because that, that pretty much right there helped me um, learn how to use a computer. Mm. Oh, yeah. Help me, help me learn things. <laughs> yeah. Help me to learn some things. <clears throat> All right, so I'm installing everything that I want to install. Maybe some TCP IP. TCP is a kind of uh, disinfectant. <laughs> <laughs> or do you look like a wild? Yeah, get, get some of that TCP and some uh, CLR to clean out your bathroom. Yeah. <laughs> and Tylex. TCP was always brought out if any of us had the bulk. Any of us had the bulk. <laughs> <sighs> um, so that's kind of what I associate that smell with. Like, oh no, someone's just. Yeah, someone's just bulked. Spirit spewing your ringer. Anyway. <laughs> Hopefully nobody's spewing the ringer at this machine because it's fantastic. The only time that would be excusable on this computer is if I was playing it with um Something like Windows Millennium Edition. Which wouldn't run because it needs a 150 megahertz processor. This has only got a 120. And yes, the Pentium 150 does exist. I know, uh, there are some Packard Bells that had that. <clears throat> there was someone, I can't even mind who it was, but they're like, I don't think the Pentium 150 exists. I'm like, no, I've, you know, because at the time I had the uh, ThinkPad 380D. And I was like, that's a 150. Really? Are you oh, sure? Oh, man. L Luke. Look what, uh, they brought, look, look what they brought back with USB 3 ports. This was the case for my 2008 custom build. Wow. Ooh. Yeah, the Antec 300. That thing was awesome. Wow. <laughs> Let me, like, bring him back the Gene Tech and... Yeah, this is quite an this is quite embarrassing because the case that my two thousand seven custom belt was dressed in was called the Fong Two P H O N G. Yeah. Not T H O N G. That's something quite yeah. different. P H O N G Two. So the Fong Two. Oh. <laughs> <laughs> um, could just imagine that with the. USB 3 parts. That case was fantastic. You know, connectivity. You know, four USB 2 parts on the front and a fire, a full-size Firewire. You know, um, <coughs> I, I just might have to, um, once I build my new desktop, once I get a job and everything, I might have to get another Antec 300. They're good cases. I used to have an Antec baseball cap in Packard Bell, <laughs> and I had a Packard Bell branded set of, uh, plastic drinks cups, which I used to use for alcoholic beverages when I was away. <laughs> I was like, yeah, we could uh, drink it out my Packard Bell cup. Yeah. Getting drunk. No, I wasn't actually, no. This this is supposed to be kid-friendly, so drinking mm. juice, okay? 
Mm. Things Crevens have... You know, the the I don't know why, but they seem to have gotten so... I mean, I understand there's drinks problems, but I mean, it's... I mean, it's like back in the day. It's, my gran used to... My gran used to tell stories about how, you know, like people's people's dads would send them out to the local pub with a jug, you know, mm-hmm. to get a beer, you know, to get beer for the dad, you know, yeah. it's, and you know, it, nobody would think anything of it, you know, just kind of send your kid out to the pub to get this beer and then take it home for dad. Yeah, I guess kids had more discipline. It's like you know you. <laughs> You know, if the kid decided to try chug a lug, then dad wouldn't be too happy. And, you know, back in the day, whoosh, whoosh. Exactly. But now it seems that alcohol, you can't mention alcohol. I mean, it's its like kids' football shirts don't have, you know, if it's got an alcoholic, um, if it's got a sponsor that makes alcoholic beverages, like, you know, Carling or Carlsberg or something, like your mm-hmm. kids' football shirts won't have any sponsors on them if it's an alcohol if it's uh, an alcoholic beverage. Yeah. See, when, you know, I had a, I had a football shirt when I was younger and, and that had uh, an alcoholic beverage sponsor on it, you know, when I was a kid. Mm. So, yeah. It's just a shame that they've decided to take this route to try and, you know, stop alcoholism. You know, just completely yeah. block it out of kids' minds. I, I don't think that's the right way. I mean, in Europe, they kind of expose kids to alcohol. Not like, oh, here you are, go get drunk. But yeah. But I mean, on the other hand, I do believe that alcohol... It really, really damages people. Anyway. It really does. <laughs> yeah. Anyway, Windows 95 setup um, has... Uh, the file copying phase is completed. Oh, so you got further An MS-DOS 7.0 has a wee trick up its sleeve because it can run Windows 3.1. So, I mean, I could actually, you know, I mean, if I, you know, don't want to use the boot to previous MS-DOS, you know, I could actually just use the Windows... I I could actually just use it to, um, you know, I could actually make multi-configuration modes and have it so it'll either run Windows 95 or run Windows 3.1. I did that years ago and it worked quite well. Personally, I prefer to partition and have them on their own separate partitions because I'm a bit of a sad act, but... Yeah, well, same here, but back then, I, I, I that's how I did it. Mm. You know, I might just do that at some point with this machine. That would be a good idea. You know, just kind of add a bigger hard drive in and do it. I think it would work quite well. But I would make sure to unplug it before actually messing about with the hard disk. Yeah, yeah, that would be a smart idea. Are you listening, Brandon Bishop's friend, laptop wrecker? <laughs> Sorry, I just don't like seeing compacts getting hurt. <laughs> and for those of you who aren't aware, actually, Brandon Bishop does actually own one of these machines. I think he's using his um, ThinkPad more now. For 95 stuff. Yeah. Oh, you could put Windows 3.1 on this machine. Ah, uh, yes, and in the older Windows 95s, you can actually select where your time zone was on a map. 
Now the reason I st the reason I stopped doing that is because of politics, because there was dispute over which country had which time zone. <laughs> so you know, as you, you you won't be actually you probably can on camera. You can actually see where it highlights the time zone that you're in. You know. I always thought that looked cool. Yeah, I did as well, but they couldn't do it. They couldn't keep on doing it because you know there there was a couple you know, political things about, you know, certain countries with certain time zones and what have you. That's why we should have voted yes. Yeah, pretty much. Because <laughs> it would have fixed all the problems with Windows 95 RTM, even though yeah. it's... <laughs> well, it's 20 years old, I believe, by the way. I know, I know. So what I'm going to do, I'm going to, I'm actually going to unplug this drive. And I'll drop the memory card in, the uh, CF card reader. I'm hoping it works in this version of 95, because if not... then I'm not going to like the direction. Mm. Okay, come on. You're going to work. You're going to work. You're going to work. Yeah, of course you're going to work. Right. Okay. So Windows 95 is up and running. But there's no sound. 48 megs of RAM. I thought this only had 32. Mm. I'm really not good at this. <laughs> mm. Yeah. So as you can see, this does have APM. I want to check the amount of memory actually, so I'm just gonna gonna take myself off into computer setup because I I don't know why I got it into my head that this had 32. Flaming 48 megs. I've been running Windows 3.1 on a 48 megabyte machine. Wow. I've I've been further. I've been 128, 2001 custom belt. You go above, I think, 64, then things start not wanting to work. I know Internet Explorer 5 will just say, oh, you've got less than 4 megs of RAM. Try use, you should use an early version of IE on a, yeah. on a machine that's got less form than 4 megs of me memory. I'm like, what, what are you on about? I've got, 30, I've got 128 megs. <laughs> 48 megs of RAM and I was running Windows 3.1. <laughs> uh, what, what do I think sometimes, seriously? Um... All right, so what we're gonna do is let's um, let's go and install the sound drivers first. As you can see, the um, device manager is slightly different in Windows ninety five RTM. <laughs> I thought it was a 688 I had, but never mind.
so the sound does work. I just had the speakers turned all the way down. Welcome to the main menu of Navigator, the easy way to get to know and use your Packard Bell computer. Explore the functions of Navigator by using the mouse or the tab or arrow keys on your keyboard. If you haven't figured it out yet, I've gone back to the 3.1 CF horn. <laughs> oh, yeah. Yeah. That went well. Tried changing my color depth and it blue screened out. Oh, lovely. Your graphics card loves you. <laughs> I know. <laughs> Probably should install proper drivers. Mm-hmm. But it works. There we go. 800 by 600, 16 bit color, but um, I'm going, going to actually install um, the driver from Compaq's website. Yeah. Trouble is, I don't know which one is, it is. Is it going to work? No, I think it just crashed again. Oh well. Did a bit. That's fine though. There you have it, you've got um, you've got um, monitor refresh settings and yeah there you have it. So that's the basic system installed, you've got sound, you've got Pretty much everything you need, really. Um, Were you able to get the video to work? Yep. Good. Unfortunately, Internet Explorer is on here because this is a version of RTM that has it. Now I'm going to... Pardon? Just don't open it. <laughs> yeah. So now to install the CD-ROM driver. So I have a, well I don't have a hardware disk, but I do have a driver provided by the manufacturer, so I'm going to away and select it now. There we go. I believe that is the driver.
And there you have it. We have... I can tell, I can tell from here those are good speakers. <clears throat> oh, yeah, they are. So um, what we can do is, and I can hardly see the car, sir, but um, we can test out the drive. Um, can go on the uh, Microsoft X position. Well, I love that. I loved, I used to love having a look at this at school. I used to love kind of firing this up at school because I love the music. It was on the Encarta 96 CD. Oh, yeah. The Encarta 95 one has Beethoven. So uh, we could have a look at, like, Office for Windows 95, or we could have a look at um, <sighs> Home, obviously. Um, I love that sound. Let's play the demo. Husband, wife, son, daughter, it doesn't matter who uses your Microsoft Home mouse the most. That's because it was designed to fit comfortably in the hands of everyone, from adults to small children, whether they use their left or right hand. Yeah, it's you got a smaller right button. Distinguish it from other mice on the market, as does the special IntelliPoint Home Edition software package that comes with it. Yeah, I do like that. Actually. But there's more to the home mouse than just a pretty face. It's blue. In addition to personalizing your PC. It provides all the quality, accuracy, and reliability that Microsoft Home products offer. The shape of the home mouse is designed for maximum comfort and easy use. I've always learned a home mouse. The home mouse combined with the IntelliPoint software allows you to hone your home computing skills in style and have a lot of fun in the process. Choose the shape of your pointer from a huge selection of images, ranging from dancers to airplanes. I just use a large black mouse pointer. IntelliPoint software also allows you to perform double-click functions with a single click. Assign tasks to a third button by pressing the right and left buttons down together. And find a lost cursor with a special sonar function. At Microsoft, we're certain everyone in your home will enjoy this mouse. Yeah. It now joins our household of goods. So go put your hands on the Microsoft Home Mouse at your local retailer. They'll tell me to get off and then they'll get security to throw me out. Right now I want to look up the Microsoft Home Mouse on eBay. I take no responsibility for that because you're making me want a 1750 CDT. So I'm just going <laughs> to... So I'm just going to play some hover instead. What is this? We've detected that you're not running in a 1556 color video drive while hover will bring you... So now I'm just a way to run hover. Um, I wonder if I can actually put it. Yes, I can. I can put it in full screen, or what this computer thinks is full screen. So there we go. We're just. I actually don't want the music because I'm a bit of a misery grut. Can I drift it? No. <laughs> I nearly drifted. I think if I go... Oops. Mm -hmm. 
So this was a Wii game that was kind of provided on the Windows 95 CD, if you were lucky enough to be able to get the CD version and had a CD-ROM drive. Um, and it's, it's kind of showcasing, I think, what Windows 95 was capable of. Whoops. That didn't go so well. It just rebooted me. What? <laughs> Why'd you do that for? Why well, gotta be like that? <clears throat> yeah. I won't try and draft it again. <laughs> I guess that's what you get. Tell me about it. But, that has been a wee look at, um, that's actually been a wee look at the uh, Compaq LTE 5280 and um, a wee install of Microsoft Windows 95 RTM, which Billy thinks is a good idea because I don't, what a load of nonsense have any machines that run Windows 95 RTM and I think those two blue screens have just kind of proved to us why I don't generally keep RTM installed on non-Packard Bell boxes because yeah <laughs> <laughs> yeah that's, that's all I can really say I can't say any more I just don't know. I, I, I forgot how to even, guys. I just forgot how to even, okay? How on. <laughs> but yeah, I'm going to try and install some software and stuff and, you know, some software like Windows and Lotus Works. No, I'm kidding on. Um, probably install Office for Windows 95. You know, usual J stuff, you know. Yeah. Apparently the new mantra is what would J do? Yeah. <laughs> yeah, this is not working as well as I was hoping it would. Blowing illegal operations all over the shop. This is why Windows 95 RTM was superseded twice. Three times. Four times, actually. <laughs> this is what we got. The reason it was superseded was because it was a, a whole pile of rubbish. <laughs> well, it's one my it, it, seems, it seems to be okay on Packard Bell, but that's everything else, not so much. That's because Packard Bell of the 90s would be able to configure Windows Vista to run like it was a proper operating system. They were that good. Okay. <laughs> Seriously, Packard Bell, I mean, it's like... I've, I've seldom had any memory problems with MS-DOS on a Packard Bell. I know, it's configured so perfectly. They knew how to do stuff back in the day, and then NEC took over and all hell broke loose. Yeah. And then Acer took over, and I think what they try and do at Acer is, uh, you know, they're the sort of people who, if they've got an itch inside their ear, to, they'll use a pistol to try and scratch it. <laughs> you know? <laughs> Anyway, <laughs> except the Travelmate division, the Travelmate division of Acer, I think, um, I, I, reckon yeah, rest, I reckon the rest of Acer all think they're, you know, guilty of the crime of witchcraft. No. Seriously. Witchcraft. Seriously, <laughs> they must be, because like, how do you guys do that? <laughs> Pardon? Sorcery. <laughs> it's sorcery how a Travelmate can be that good. Yep, but this is my uh, Compaq LTE 5280. Fantastic laptop. I'm having a couple of te teething problems at the moment. We're crashing in Windows 95A RTM. Um, they made a version for Canada, which was Windows 95A. <laughs> no, I'm only getting on that. <laughs> it was available all around. That was the uh, first version of Windows 95 I got to call my own one. What's that? 95A. And then uh, 95 OSR2, which in my opinion is the zenith of Windows 95. So install it on your Xeno. No, I'm only kidding on. Don't install it on your Xenote. Um, 
and then there was 95 OSR 2.1, which was slightly better, and then there's OSR 2.5, which was all right if you wanted active desktop, which on some machines I do, but I'd sooner install Microsoft Plus before installing active desktop update so that, you know, the stupid plus for Windows 95 high-color icons can be overwritten by Windows 98-style ones. Yeah, <laughs> that was, you know, other than a few um, select machines like your Presario 2240, um, if you're going to install Active Desktop on Windows 95, you might as well just install Windows 98. Yeah, I guess so. I mean, there, there are still a couple differences. You know, certain things prefer 95 to 98. Only a few, but, you know, it's still, yeah. Um... But apart from that, yeah, you're right. I mean, you may as well just install 98. I do like the active desktop because I like being able to, you know, have an address bar in my computer window so, you know, I can just type the path of where I want to be. Yeah. I mean, that is something that I do use even to this day. And, you know, on even on Linux. Yeah. Um, Something that I really did miss, actually, about, you know, when I was uh, running my Apple Macs, actually, the fact that you couldn't just kind of type an address and, and it would and then the finder would take you there nope finder decided that it wanted to be very difficult about it you know mm. and at the same time um you could um you were able i love how in the finder you're able to totally customize it to be any color you want it to be oh wait that's not right is it mm. no you get like three colors <laughs> two you get cyan oh, you only get two. I forgot. Uh, yeah aqua or graphite <laughs> So do you want slightly blue or slightly gray? Yeah. What a what a what a grim prospect for window decoration. <laughs> it's because Apple don't want you actually doing any independent thinking. You know how in that Simpson, you know how in the Simpsons episode Lisa the Vegetarian, the teachers have got independent thought uh, thought alarms. This yeah. I think I honestly think Apple have those dotted about all over the place. And it's like you know how how Macs have got webcams and mics and you know if you if you're thinking independently it triggers an independent thought thought alarm at Cupertino. Yes. <laughs> it's like oh crap, we're in trouble now. <laughs> no, I mean don't get me wrong. I mean I I did have Macs. You know I did have a MacBook Pro. You know, it was one of my best laptops, and that was that is no lie. That that's not me just trying to, you know, randomly curry favor with the Apple crowd. You know, it was a fantastic machine to have and to use. You know, I really did enjoy using it and have it. You know, and I remember getting it. I remember the feeling that I felt. It was just really odd when they were like, "They're just bringing down your MacBook Pro now." It was like, "That's weird. This is my MacBook Pro." I know. <laughs> it's an occasion when you go to the Apple store and buy a MacBook Pro. It was a lot, kind of like when uh, my dad bought our first computer, the Packer Bell Legend 822 CET. That buying a new computer then was just a uh, really an occasion. Well, I mean, it's it's what I said about the 2240 in that video that Billy seems to have spliced the sound. And... <laughs> <laughs> yeah, I mean, literally. I mean, I know it's now become something of a joke now, but I mean, I, I said this two years ago. My parents didn't just walk into Staples and go, that one. You know, it wasn't it wasn't like it is today. They didn't just walk into Staples and go, that one. I think buying a computer, it, it was a lot better back in the day. It was an event. I I remember people saying, oh, it was something that you'd get the family around. It's like, oh, you got to come and see, got to come and over. We got the new computer. We want to show you the new computer. I know. That's how it was here. <clears throat> Not in my family. My family were like, just you keep quiet. Because, <laughs> of course, you know, you don't want to be bragging about things, but you know, some people, you know how it is, you know. But I think the reason that computing, buying a computer has lost all of its pizzazz is because they are cheap. Well, yeah. when I say cheap, I mean, there's a lot of people that still can't afford one. Yeah, but, you know, it's like buying a toaster now. Yeah, it really has become like that. And it's and it makes me quite sad, actually, that it has become like that. Yeah. I, you know, I just, I just think, what a pity. Because, 
find a computer. You know, it should be something special. A computer is brilliant. You can do all sorts with it. I know. You know, and you can you can go, you can access the internet. You can. Oh, so much you can do with a computer, seriously, and they're, they're just now being treated like, like Luke said, like a toaster, like a white good. It's <laughs> really isn't that good at all. Anyway, um, do you guys have any last comments? Well, all I have to, what I have to say is, well, first, I'm jealous of that laptop, and two, um... What you just said is so true. Um, it's, you know, um, I've always said that computers in the 90s were like TV sets in the 50s. You know, um, when you, back then, when you got a computer, it was it was pretty much like a holiday. It was, a, it was like a big event, or big event, rather. Yeah. Yeah, yeah kind of a, a yeah. special occasion, as, as we would call it in Scotland. It was a special occasion. Yeah, it, re it really was. And I, I loved how, you know, home computers were pitched at something that the, the whole family could enjoy. It was a family activity. Exactly. You know, it's, I remember when we, you know, when we all sat down, when uh, Mum set up the compact for the first time, you know, as a family, all of us. It's like, I remember when we got the Packard Bell Legend 822 CDT back in 1995. Um, what my dad did was he bought two desk chairs for it for when he's using the computer for when he was using it instead of me I could sit in the other chair next to him and watch him yeah yeah just kind of things like that you know it was um, it was it was it really was a big thing um, Luke do you have anything you'd like to add I want one that's pretty much what I said you want what? <laughs> an LTE model of uh, an LTE. I want to get an LTE. Of course you do. Everyone needs an LTE. <laughs> the LTE 5000 series is just home run, dude. Yeah. I do like it's this just, machine. It's as 90s laptops as they come. I really want to get the battery rebuilt for this so I could take it on the road. I can do that for my Versa. Yeah. Yeah, and my ThinkPad. Seriously, it's it's a fantastic machine. It's you know when I saw this one on eBay, it was just like, gotta get it. <laughs> I don't care. I've just gotta get it. Okay. Anyway, thank you for watching, and I hope you all join me for my next video.